wrong side of the slum. It was a dream, but now, alhamdulillah, it's a reality. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. My name is Ishaq Mustakim. My father is from Haiti and my mother is from Switzerland and I'm Muslim two years now. I was born in Montreal and um, I grew up in Montreal. Uh, when I was a, a kid, a young kid, I was really good in school. Like my mom, like I, I, I'm sure my mom had like high hope in me because uh, I was a, his, his, his first kid and uh, I was a really good kid, really good grades in school and everything. Everything turned, uh, changed while um, I was uh, looking for happiness. I was only uh, living with my mom and my stepfather and I didn't really have a father figure. Uh, he was not, my stepfather was not a, f a father figure and my dad was not in my life. So uh, I ended up uh, being raised uh, by the street. So um, at the age of uh, like uh, 14, 13, 14 years old, I started looking like the, the other kids in school. Uh, and I saw them, like I saw the kids that were like uh, taking drug and drinking alcohol and going out with girls. I saw them like more happy than the other kids. So I started to, to, to wanted to be with them and, and try that stuff. So that's what I did. And hanging out with bad people uh, end up to giving us like bad habits. So at the age of uh, 15, um, I was so bad that they put me in like a juvenile jail. So I went to juvenile jail like for a few months. And um, after that, um, I, I, did, I, I didn't stop like doing bad things. I did so much bad things that um, they, want, they wanted me like to lock me down like for good. Uh, so I ran. I ran for that from I ran out from that juvenile jail and um, after that uh, my mom had to send me back like to send me to uh, Switzerland so I went to Switzerland um, to work for 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 her brother and um, I were I was working there like for I worked there like for like three months but then again I, I was alone there but I put myself into a trouble that the police was looking for me, that I had to come back here to Montreal. And that uh, was at the age of 17. Um, at the age of 17, I cooled off. Uh, I stopped doing like bad things a little bit because I, I was saying to myself like, soon I will be 18 and soon, like if I get caught, I will go to jail. But uh, I don't know what happened with me like at 18, like. I started back again and uh, they got me and I went to jail for like two years. Before I went to jail, uh, I, learned, I learned that the happiness was um, into getting high, getting drunk and getting with girls. But in jail, uh, because jail is the school of crime, I learned that the happiness was into getting a lot of material thing, a lot of money. And um, two years in that jail made like just like made me have a criminal mind. I was, I, I didn't had a really criminal mind before, but that two years, like that's what it did. And um, I was, I was Christian before and I was Christian, but I was not praying. Just, I was only praying like when I, I wanted something really bad or when I was in problems, into problems. And that jail time was for me a problem. So I started reading the Bible and uh, praying a little bit and I don't know why like uh, somebody that I wasn't wasn't speaking with um, he wasn't ar ar around like the who I was hanging with um, he just came and gave me the uh, Quran and he told me to read it but at that time like uh, I was reading the Bible and the Quran was not uh, write it the same way so uh, it didn't like touch me, so I just like give it back. After when the, um, I got out from jail, um, I started my mission, my mission uh, to get money. When I got out of jail is uh, there that when, when I got out of jail is um, then when I started chasing the money. 
getting after the money. And um, because I had no school and the fastest way to get money was uh, a criminal way, that's uh, the way I went. And in every um, type of way to make money, any t type of like uh, bad thing you can think, I was in it. Because really my plan was getting money. And um, I lived like, I don't know if it was, if it's a good thing or if some people would say it's a good thing. Some people would say it's a curse because in my life, like I achieved like most of my goals that I, that I wanted. And um, for 10 years, like I lived that life that life of like luxury, that life of power and respect. So, um, because when I say this, like people don't really understand, so I have to make a little bit like of, of uh, explain a little bit. Like when we, we, when I say like I had the things that most people young and older they would like to have that I had in my life, they don't really understand. Because everybody has his own uh, perspective on like what is luxurious. So when we're talking about cars, Benz, I have a few, I had a few, BMW, Porsche, Viper, Hummer, Jaguar, Cadillac, like most of all the brands, like the big brands, that's the card that I had, like houses, condos, but not like only like the cars like normal, like the, the car, because when you buy a car, it's like to make you happy, because, but the thing is that happiness doesn't last. So after, right after, like you have to suit up the car. But after, when the car is suit up, there's nothing else to do. So you buy another car. Me at, at one time like had like two cars and I was renting out like other cars just to have another change because like I was bored. I, I had a house and I was living in hotel suites. It cost me like 10,000 a week just for hotel suites. So the clothes, like just the clothing, like um, because like uh, when you have money like uh, even the money like uh, change your style a little bit because before I was like I, I was addressing like everybody but after that I had to like buy suits you know like uh, three like three four thousand dollar suits you know and uh, I had like uh, me I was not really the type that was going like into clubs and and um, partying uh, I didn't really like that. What I liked it more was really, because really I was on a mission. I really liked it more, like staying home, counting money, planning for other, other plans, you know? So when I got out, got out to, to, into, the, into the club, was only like for money purpose, when we had like <laughs> meetings or like when, when they, when, when they invite me, so they had to be like VIPs and everything because the thing is that most of the rappers, they want to be like gangsters and most of the kids, they want to be like rappers, but those rappers, they want to be like the criminals. Mm. And at one time, that was the type of, of person I was. I was a person that really liked like to enjoy a good meal so that was my that's what I liked it most most every day going to big restaurant like big like the biggest restaurant of the cities and eating on floors that most of you will never see like floors that that, that are not open to the public so we eat like for like few thousand a meal and that's nothing because more there's other people that's doing more you know so that was the type of life that 
I was living. And I lived like a millionaire life for like 10 years. But at the end, because all that do doesn't come from, from nothing, you have to work a lot. And at the end, I was questioning myself, like, because when you have all that, and I, I didn't find the happiness, like, even at one time, because I was in my house, that I all, like, I all, I rebuilt the, my complete house, like, <laughs> I, I, made, I, I, I made a container, like, to come in front of my house, and I destroyed everything, like, throw out everything on, in the container and I rebuild everything like with the best of the material but even after <laughs> I'm alone in my house like and I'm thinking like I'm not happy even if I drink the best of the alcohol I'm not happy so I was questioning myself like really badly and um, it's then when sometimes like you you go into like little like what we can call like depression because you're questioning yourself so much and um, at the same time like because when you live uh, that kind of life can be good forever so after 10 years uh, I got caught for a little thing and uh, I had a sentence of uh, 11 months so I went to jail for uh, for a few months, nine months, and um, because I did like you don't do like the full sentence. Like I went, I, I went to jail for nine months. So uh, there, because of my criminal file, like they put me like in a certain uh, um, area, like the maximum. And at that time, like they put me like even like if I had like a a, a good life, there's always like you always want more. So there's like always, I was looking up to other people still, you know? So, and they put me like in a, in a wing with like those kind of people that had even more money, that was spending even more money. Like they were talking like a lot of money. So, um, and, and <laughs> you, and we, it's not like anybody like we're talking just like that and you believe like you can read it in the newspaper when something happened like it's in the newspaper so um and they were t talking about me like that even them they were not happy even them like they wanted to change so really all that m made me even more like put in a position that I had that, that I had to think about my life. And um, after, at the end of my sentence, uh, I got uh, in, a jail, in, in a cell with um, a Muslim. And uh, that Muslim brother uh, started to talk to me about Islam. And uh, really, now I was like, because I was already questioning myself. So I was really interested about uh, what he was saying. And uh, what is a good thing for him, but a bad thing for me, he got released. But he told me he would send me the Quran, but uh, maybe something happened because he never did. Like, not, I don't know if he never did, but I never, I never received it. So, um, after uh, I got released and I went back to, to my same life, you know, and I forgot everything about, about God because when you know more into problems and you're not a Muslim, as soon as things go good, like you forgot God again. And um, while I was like do, doing my life, uh, I met up uh, with a woman and um, that woman, she was Muslim and her mom, she told me that I should look up into Islam. And it's then that I started doing my own research so I was uh, reading like books and I read the Quran and I was really surprised to find that in the Quran that they were they had like the the same prophet that there was in the Bible uh, even at a point that I, I didn't understand understood how Muslim will understand the Quran because in the Bible they have like the beginning of the story 
and the Quran just completed it. So, um, and I, I started to do my own research, like even like a lot, a lot, a lot I was recent researching and um, the only problem that I end up having is like that because as a Christian, you have to believe that Jesus is the son of God. And if you don't believe this, you go to hell. And if you believe it, you go to paradise. And I didn't want it to go to, to hell for nothing. Like, like he had to be the true religion. So I had to really make some research. And uh, alhamdulillah, um, I found that Islam was the truth. And uh, I made my shahada. So right after I took my shahada, three days after, um, my mom uh, called me and told me that uh, the police was looking for me. So I went to see my lawyers and they told me that I have to, I should give myself tin. So uh, I went and I gave myself tin, uh, but the, for the first time, it was the first time I went into jail as a Muslim. Uh, I'm here with my client Isaac, or known as Isaac Mushtaqim, who is charged in Montreal with various offenses, uh, particularly fraud, forgery, the use of forged documents. With regards to the fraud that my client is charged with, uh, the amount of the fraud is $689,970.24. This would occurred in the year of 2006 over a three month period between the months of May and September. But there's a different side to Isaac that we know and that we've come across. Since his arrest, since these events, Isaac has completely turned his life around. I mean, notwithstanding this criminal record, I mean, breaking and entering, conspiracy to commit a criminal act, the robbery, assault, mischief, intentional impersonation, I mean, the list goes on and on. Notwithstanding all of this, this individual has completely changed himself. He is no longer the person that he was when he was younger. Uh, he's married. He had a tough life. I mean, he grew up on the street. He grew up a, a, a life of crime and violence. That's no longer the person he is. He's married. He's a contributing member of society. He has a stable job. We have letters of recommendation from his employers. Uh, he's found religion. He's converted to Islam, and he's he you know he, he's very observant of that. Uh, he commits himself to to do charity work on on a purely volunteer basis no one has asked him to do this and these are all signs of someone that has seen the process seen that crime is not a life that he has chosen and he has clearly indicated that he wants to be a contributing member of society and that that advice what advice have you got to muslims and non-muslims regarding islam but because more that I because before I I, did, I never knew like Muslim people. If there was Muslim people in around me, I didn't know because they never 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 talked to me about Islam. I, I thought I think I really think that there was no Muslim around me. But now that I'm a Muslim and I'm just like hanging out with Muslim and seeing Muslim, there's a thing that really like get me sad, you know? It's because me before I used to like a lot of the I, I used to like a lot the tattoos. And on my head a tattoo get money. But more that I see little kids like young kids, young Muslim I realized that they have the same tattoo that I have but not on their head they have it on their heart and they want to compromise their Islam for money for like like seriously stupidity like I, I don't and that would get me like really sad that they don't know the value of what they really have because Islam gives me an happiness that like that everything that I had in my life like all the money the girls because with a lot of money comes the girls 
the money, the girls, the house, the condo, like all that life never gives me a happiness that I have today. A, happen a happiness that lasts. And for the non-Muslim, seriously, before, like I, I didn't know nothing, I, I, for, for real, me, before, I will never thought I will be a Muslim. Never. Never. <laughs> so seriously, like, what they showed, what they're showing, like, in the media, because we all think, like, we think, like, Muslim is like crazy people with beard that want to blow themselves up. Like, I don't, I don't understand. Like, what you see in the media is not the real thing. Really, if you want to learn something, you open the book and you read. And before I used to not read, never read. But seriously, when you read about Islam, it's the best thing that you can learn. And even if you're not interested, about changing your religion or getting a religion at least just read it for like education just read it so you know what they're talking about why so much people are turning into Islam why you have to question yourself like because everybody has a brain maybe you, you believe there's a God or not I believe there's a God and a God like give us a brain and the brain is to think. So I just ask you to think by yourself. Don't think like don't don't just follow what the media gives you. Like think by yourself and read like read the Quran. There's translation of the Quran in French, in English, in all the language. So just read. Try to really learn about Islam and don't look what the Muslims are doing. Because that's a lot of people say like, uh, but I know I'm Muslim. A lot of Muslims, we're human beings and we all do mistakes. And there's a lot of Muslims that like, uh, there's only one Muslim and that was a prophet that really like can live what the religion the Prophet والسلام, like that really like lived what the religion was teaching. But all the Muslim, most of the Muslim, even me, I'm first me. I'm not I'm not a perfect Muslim. We all try to be good. We all try, but you can't learn the religion by looking at me or hearing what I'm saying. So that's why I'm saying go read the Quran. And learn about Islam uh, from its its source. And I want to say Jazakallah khair to Roadside to Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi taala wa barakatuh.